Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship today. For those that are not connected to the church down the street, we're Memorial Presbyterian Church. We are about a block away, a block and a half away, just next door to the dentist's office. And we are going to be doing worship in the next uh, at least month here, and maybe longer, depending. Um, I just got back from going to Rhode Island, and they have a pretty low count of um, corona, so uh, we went to the wharf. I don't know. How, has anybody been to Newport, Rhode Island before? There's a couple folks out there. I'm not, uh, I'm from the West Coast, so I don't know all the places that well, even though I've been here for a long time. Um, we went uh, to the wharf, and there was probably a thousand people in total kind of walking back and forth, every one of them in masks, every one of them being very polite and social distancing, even though we were kind of, on, we were all on vacation together, and we were all wanting to enjoy ourselves, and we all wanted to eat, drink, and be merry, and... I was just so impressed how I saw it working while on vacation. And here I don't go out a lot, so I didn't, I don't know what happens here, because I go to the grocery store and then I come home. I, I go uh, out to pick out my takeout and then I come home. But uh, it was nice to see people being cautious and at the same time enjoying themselves. Um, today we're gonna be talking about faith. I am not gonna be preaching. Jeff Craig is gonna be our preacher, he's back here. Um, I have Pat Hart, who is going to be our liturgist, and uh, Meg Cornelli is our pianist and music director, and we have Pam Raup, who's going to be singing a solo for us. And I'm so glad that all of you are able to participate in worship today. Um, we come because we believe in God. We come because we believe that the power of God has the ability not just to do great things out there, but also do great things in here, in each one of us. We believe that the God who brought Jesus to earth and who was Jesus is the one who gives us hope during times of difficulty. We are in times of difficulty, and we need hope, and we need faith. And I am so glad that you come here in order to as a community, as a group of believers come together in order to experience that hope and that faith together. At this time, um, I better read my bulletin. Are there any other announcements? Um, August 19th, our church is having a Red Cross blood drive, and so if you are a blood donor and want to stay near to home in order to give blood, uh, August 19th, you can go on the Red Cross uh, website and type in August 19th and your zip code and it'll show the church. And then just sign up for uh, giving blood. We are gonna be putting posters up, I think in the next day or two and putting it on Facebook as well. At this time, let us pray. Oh God, we come to you believing that the power that created everything that we see in existence, whether it be on this planet or throughout the entire universe, you have created. We believe that as the creator, you don't just sit back and watch things just go, but you are actively involved here as we live our lives, that you actively touch our hearts with your Holy Spirit, that you actively guide not just individuals, but entire communities and nations to live out your law of loving one another and seeking for you. And we pray that today we are able to capture the awe and wonder of you being our creator and also the intimate love that you give us through your son, Jesus. We pray that you allow for us to know that you care about us today and that as we put our faith in you, we will see great things happen. Make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's join in the prayer of confession. O oh God, we confess in our blindness we are not even aware of sinning. In our pride, we dare not admit when we have done wrong. In our selfishness, we can see nothing but our own will. In our callousness, we cease to care. In our defiance, we do not regret our own sin. Our evasion that makes excuses, our coldness of heart that is too hardened to repent. Grant us courage and honesty to share our sins with you. Fill us with gratitude, knowing that nothing we do can separate us from your love and forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we do not have a God that aims at condemning us or punishing us. We have a God that loves us and desires for us to be reconnected again and again to that love, reconnected again to that source of power that gives us hope for new life. Brothers and sisters, know that through Christ Jesus, our sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. that comes from the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith talks like this. Don't say in your heart who will go up into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will go down into the region below, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart, that is, the message of faith that we preach. Because if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and in your heart you have faith that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Trusting with the heart leads to righteousness, and confessing with the mouth leads to salvation. This is the word of the Lord.
Good morning, everyone. Our second scripture reading, New Testament reading, comes from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 34. This is the passage of Jesus and Peter walking on the water. And see, as you listen to the passage, if, like me, you can relate to being Peter. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water. And he came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. When Carol and I were first married almost 25 years ago in September of 1995, we bought a small Victorian house on Delaware Street in Woodburn. That house had a a garden a big garden that ran along the driveway that we shared with our neighbors, Bill and Nancy Thompson. Now, Bill was the president of the then Underwood Hospital, and Nancy was a sweet lady uh, who was an avid gardener and who in many ways took Carol under her wing. Back then, Carol was a young nurse at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. CHOP, as it's referred to. And Children's Hospital is a place of miracles where doctors and nurses do amazing things to heal very sick children. Carol worked in the Pediatric Cardiac Intensive Care Unit, the PICU. Now, in a perfect world, if I had a perfect world, there would never be a need for a pediatric cardiac intensive care unit. But unfortunately, there was and is a need. And dedicated caregivers like Carol answered the call. Sadly, many of the children in CHOP's PICU have grave and terminal illnesses. Many of them are born with heart defects. And sadly, despite heroic efforts of many of these doctors and nurses, many of these children don't survive. Back then, as a young nurse, Carol worked basically either the 7 to 7 shift or the 3 to 11 shift. So she would get home usually pretty late at night. And usually... Not usually, she would just come in and she would, be, she would be fine. But some nights I noticed when she came home, she didn't come right in the house. Instead, she went back into the garage, got tools out, and went into the garden that ran along the back of the house. And in her nurse's scrubs, she was down on her knees gardening and planting. I didn't think too much about this at first. But I remember one night 
in particular. It was late at night. I had worked all day. I had come home, done my thing, and gone to bed. Carol got home from work, heard the car in the driveway, but she didn't come in immediately. I saw the garage light on, and I saw her down on her knees in the dirt, digging feverishly. And I went out to her to talk to her to see what had happened, figuring it had been a bad day. And then my neighbor, Nancy, appeared on her back step, and she called me over. And she told me that Carol had had a terrible day, that one of the patients that she had treated since the patient was a baby had died, and that this gardening, this was Carol's way to cope. This was her way to keep the faith. I remember suggesting to Carol that maybe she should transfer to a less demanding position, a, a less demanding unit, even if it was at Children's Hospital. And she smiled and she declined. And she said, no, this is what I do. They're all angels. My job is to send them home with their parents. But sometimes we have to send them home to God. And at that moment, I realized the deep faith that doctors and nurses had to do to do their job. Sometimes in the face of heartbreaking and overwhelming odds. Carol and the other nurses were Peter. They were called to step out of the boat every day. And they sometimes started to sink. But their faith and their resolve and their resilience carried them through each day. Now I want you to fast forward to 2020. It's a year like no other. Not that I can remember, right? You know the numbers. I don't even have to repeat them for you. 4.4 million Americans sickened with coronavirus. 160,000 dead and counting. Social and racial unrest. An economy sometimes in freefall. Schools uncertain if they're going to open. Sometimes, if you're like me, when you see the news each day, it's hard to get out of bed. Hard to face each day. It's hard to keep the faith. You get out of bed, you go to work, you do your thing, you get a diagnosis. You start to sink. A marriage fails. You start to sink. A job is lost. You start to sink. The bills mount. You start to sink. An eviction notice comes. You start to sink. A neighbor or a relative passes away. You start to sink. It is precisely, I believe, at that time, in those dark moments, that we have to get down in our gardens, that we have to find our faith, that we have to realize that in those moments, those dark, those sinking dark moments, that God is with us and He will not leave us. He's with us in the mass and resolute faces of the doctors and nurses who care tires, tirelessly for the sick. He's with us in the eyes of the first responders and the essential workers who, in the face of danger, go to work every day and do their job with resolve. He's with us in the words of the peacemakers who try to bridge the divides between us. He's with us in the actions of the teachers who will go to work, who will teach our kids even in the face of danger. And He's with us in each of you 
who regularly provide music or care for a neighbor or donate time and money to help those in need. Our challenge, I think, like the challenge before Peter, was not to walk on water. It is to have the faith to continue to try. Let us accept that challenge and step forward in faith. Prayers and concerns. Jeff, thank you for those words of encouragement and the understanding that each one of us has to figure out how are we going to get the faith rekindled in ourselves. Uh, Carol was the perfect example of a gardener, and prayer is one of those ways where we gain faith as well. It's a time that we get to have a conversation with God. A conversation is not just us spewing a bunch of things out and then expecting God to then go and run all the errands for us. Um, prayer is us entering a conversation, believing that there is a God that is in the universe, but also the Holy Spirit's right here in our hearts. Uh, in the Romans passage we read a couple weeks ago, the Holy Spirit knows what we are going to pray before we even know ourselves. There is this idea that God is longing and desiring to not just be there for us, but to have a conversation with us. To have us truly understand that when we cry out to God, God is there. And also for us to truly believe that God has something to speak to us, which means we have to stay silent and we have to listen. We have to discover those still small voices inside that the Holy Spirit gives us to guide us to be the people he constantly is calling us to be. Are there any prayer concerns at this time? Yes, Kim. Uh, ask you for prayers for Jane Petrilli. She's going through um, ongoing testing for cancer. Okay. Jane Petrilli, uh, she was a longtime member. She's um, had more testing done for cancer, and she's, it's still unknown. It just keeps dragging on. Um, Margie, yes. Hi, Matthew Bryan Conley. He's in the hospital with major health issues. Nothing to do with COVID. Okay, Brian has got major health issues not related to COVID. And so we're praying for Jane and for Brian. Any other joys or concerns? Let us come to the Lord in prayer. God, we give thanks for your word that gives us faith. We give thanks for stories of people like Peter, one of the most important apostles, who was willing to get out of the boat and had faith to walk forward, but also had anxieties and fears that drug him down. We give thanks that you were there to lift him up. And we pray that we are like Peter, jumping out of the boat, walking, and as we begin to sink, that we would put our trust in you to lift us up one more time. We pray that you're with the people that we have just named, Jane Petrilli, who has had cancer and continues to go in for tests uh, in a way that can be exhausting and questioning. We pray for Brian, who has ongoing health complications. And we pray that for both of them, you would offer healing. You would offer hope. We pray for both of them, they would have a deeper sense of your presence in the midst of the struggle than sometimes we do in our daily routine. Pray that you're with all of us, giving us the willingness not to just think about ourselves, but to think about everyone around us. How can we do a good turn for someone? How can we reach out in a phone call to somebody who might not get out very often? How can we be willing to deliver some food or just some, 
simple gift that shows that we care. We pray thankfulness for all those hard workers that are willing to risk their lives in order to uh, keep our lives going, whether they be in the medical field, the police departments, the fire departments, the um, shop right or other grocery stores. We pray that you allow for all them to also feel your comfort and love. And now, Lord, we pray the prayer Christ taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And before we hear the special music, uh, if you did bring an offering, there is a box in the back to drop that offering off. If you want to give to the church, please go on our website, WinonaPC.org, and click on the, it's, I think it's the Give button, and uh, you can give through a credit card or a, check, uh, a checkbook account. And now we get to hear some special music from Pam and Meg. <laughs> Thank you, Pam, for some awesome singing on a wonderful Sunday morning. Brothers and sisters, we are meant to be fed by Jesus in faith. We are meant to be able to gain hope, knowing that there is a God that loves us. Today, for the rest of this week, take into your heart that truth that God loves you. When you are at your end, as uh, Jeff pointed out, we get in a moment like this over and over for many different reasons. Uh, whether it be we can't leave Florida for months or whether it, we are struggling because of uh, friends or family that we don't get to see as much. 
let us know that Jesus is with us, giving us the courage and the strength and the hope we need for each and every day. Let us go forth acknowledging the power of Jesus in our hearts. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.